You ready? I'm ready. I haven't dozed off while this is going on. Huh? Do you want to take a seat? Might help. Is that better? Sure. Well, we've also got Merle Saunders here who's going to be opening the show at the Warfield. How you doing, Merle? Pretty good. Pretty what, good. What have you been doing? Working on this uh, Rainforest album number two. It's been taking me about a year and a half since we had a lot of uh, passing of Jerry and uh, also the passing of Eddie Moore that was part of that project. It was kind of took me for kind of a loop. I wanted to come from a different angle and um, took me all the way to Bulgaria, putting the Bulgaria singers on it. One of the young ladies that worked with me is from Bulgaria and uh, uh, one of the composers got a song to me and I started doing it in the band and I just said any chance of me getting the Bulgarian singers is yeah come to Bulgaria <laughs> so, wow. uh, so Christmas time there I went off to Bulgaria it's crazy me but uh, I was quite amazed the musicianship was excellent over there this is the state choir the women that I got uh, four members of the choir I wrote the song, uh, this particular two songs, and uh, sent the tape over there, and they said they would like to do it, but the catch is, you come here. So uh, I went there, spent Christmas there, and it was uh, amazing. The musicians, the studios, they were quite, uh, uh, just about like the studios here in the United States. Um, the musicianship was excellent. Walking in on a television show, there's only one television show, and I walked in on, during the show, they were honoring a musician. And I walked in there, and uh, they were playing Satin Doll by Duke Ellington. So I'm standing where I could, can't believe this. You know, I'm behind the Iron Curtain here in this big band, play Satin Doll, and my mouth is open. You know? Wow. So it was quite amazing. You know? uh, it was, uh... uh, is, that, is, is there talk getting into this thing, Ken? It's sort of distracting here. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Don't do that, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> That was, was just me stumble, you know. <laughs> I fell out the chair. <laughs> well, yeah, well, we'll work around it, I guess. Yeah. Um, well, when is this record going to be uh, coming out? We're at the end, end of the tunnel now. As a matter of fact, I use uh, Vince, uh, one of my old colleagues, Steve Kimock on guitar. I mean, uh, Steve uh, was in the first Rainforest band. And he got busy with uh, Robert Hunter and... Uh, and um, zero and everything. So he kind of said, Merle, I'm, I'm, I got to do this for a month, a couple of months. So I went ahead and got me a, I had to get another guitar player by the name of a Michael Hinton. So Steve said, Hey, Merle, you know to fire, fire me, man. What the heck? So uh, there was a part where I felt that he should play this particular guitar part. It was a, uh, the title song is called uh, Fiesta Amazonica. When I went to the Amazon and I felt Steve uh, was on the last Rainforest album that he should be able to do that so I'm waiting for his son though his son is a great <laughs> musician serious drummer matter of fact he was um, he was the first he first played with me when he was two so, uh, so I he's a very serious young man that's very you serious. don't see him smiling or no, giggling no, when he's, he's playing he's, those he's drums. very serious how old is he now how old is he now he's going to be seven yeah oh. excellent I mean you know he plays like a 14 year old you know at two, he was playing like he was a ten years old. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's very serious. So, you know. He may catch up with himself around eighteen then. Uh, He'll probably be done with it probably by then. He already did. Well, he got him. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely serious about it. He's. But uh, playing this music and uh, trying to finish it up is, is, is I'm kind of at the end of the tunnel now, so uh, I feel very good. It took me about a year to have to write about seven songs, six songs, because it was. Uh, my mind was just not, I was really not focused, you know. It was really hard to get, so much things were happening, you know. Uh, we've had some, this year and a half has been very, <laughs> we Lord can take have deep breaths, yes, Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it, it never stops. Uh, um, John Kahn is my one of my dear friends and the uh, very, very first person I met when I came back from New York before I met Jerry anyone. I met John Kahn with uh, Michael Bloomfield, you know. Uh, matter of fact, that's the horn section I used uh, with my first recordings, and then I, uh, doing, I was doing so much session work with uh, Nick Gravenitis, and that's where I met uh, Garcia. You know? Ah, great! And that's where we start. They start. We had this little thing in the studio where we just kind of uh, found each other. You know, we had this kind of charisma, this chemistry happening. So the um, Nick Gravenitis started putting us all, putting us together on this project, that project, and then. We started hanging out together at night, and then we started, or I started to 
this organ trio at the at the club where Howard Wills didn't show up one night, and so I just sat at the organ and started playing on the um, organ pedals, in which uh, no one knew that I played. And so it was just uh, Bill Vitt, Garcia, and me playing organ pedals, you know. And uh, it Bill was like, and uh, and uh, Nick live up in Sonoma County, don't they? Yeah, yes, they do. And so this is John Kahn was uh, the the young man who he gave the bass to my son at uh, 11 years old, Tony. And oh, Tony was yeah. a keyboard player. And I said, why did you do that, John? He said, well, he kept looking at me for the past two years, so I gave him the bass, and then that's, you know. This is where I met this young man <laughs> when he was about 13 or 14. Yeah. Yeah, working at uh, Don Weir's. Don Weir's, yeah, yeah. Wow. I was amazed. I used to come down and just watch this guy, because this <laughs> kid could play his ass off when he was 13. <laughs> yes. Beat that up. That's okay. You can say yes. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 he could play. Helped you load the amp out, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bought an amp. Well, that's how I make a friend, man. He bought an amp, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was the warehouse boy at the music store. He was a Don warehouse Harris. boy. He was a good musician, though, you know. You can tell good musicians. It, start, it doesn't start just all of a sudden. It starts at a young age. He was very serious and focused then. Yeah. Well, I uh, uh, did a little bit of research and... and uh, Found the live adventures of Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper that had there's one song in there, Her Holy Modal Majesty, has this wonderful oh, bass oh, solo by John Kahn. And then I I found some uh, um, Legion of Mary oh, material. I had some, got some. Great. Yeah, I I did a tribute to John a couple of weeks ago on oh, PFA. Geez, and it was, it was John, great to dig out some of that good old stuff. Yeah. People don't know that you know they are the one of the songs I wrote for um, the, the live at Keystone was the song called Find His Keepers is very popular, but they don't know that John and I wrote that together, you know. And oh, uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> is it credited on the record? Yes. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's uh, we did a lot, he was, a, he, you know, the young man was a quiet, he was a producer, but very quiet, you know. A lot of the tunes that I, that I did during that era was, uh, John would say, um, Dynamite. All these songs, you know, they were, Created by John Kahn for me to sing these songs. You know. Really? Um, I just took it and he said, You can do it, you can do it. I said, Wow, you know. He said, You can do it. And he, we would rehearse together and then I would find a way to do it. But uh, John Kahn was an uh, excellent musician, excellent man. He was a very uh, uh, underrated musician, you know, very underrated. Well, he was so low key on stage. I mean, he was. Yeah, he, he had one of these, um, I never will forget we, we were in Woodstock, uh, Marie Mulder, and we, I think we had the rhythm, other rhythm section of uh, um, Aretha Franklin, and we were doing, um, I can't even think of the number of the song we were doing, but it was a country song, we were, and uh, Jealous Kind, Jealous Kind, by the guy, I actually wrote it, and he gave us the music. Vince, get ready for this. He gave us this piece of paper with three D's on it, four C's, three G's, and he says, would you play it that way? So, you know, we, we looked around, was, uh, we looked around at one another, and John Kahn said, we'll just do it that way. And so pretty soon we started, and it didn't work, you know, so everybody, John said, put the music down, just play. Because each song had four changes, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, that three thing, right? Yeah, um, so we want to play four, four C's, you know, four, and then a C, and play three D's, and then play a G. So was, that was about the most outrageous thing, but it, the, the, the session turned out great. It turned out great. Uh, he was the town. Uh, How does that song go? Pardon me? How did, can you hum a few bars? or? Uh... Um, Jealous Kai? Yeah. I mean, I pardon my ignorance, but. Yeah, mine too. Girl, don't girl. It's a it's a blues. It starts with the one, the five. Girl, don't be angry if I seem rude each time we meet. A boy that you once knew, that you said used to be close to you. It's just that I'm so afraid. So am I steal you away if I lose my mind? Please help me before I cloak, wipe these tears from my eyes, because honey, I'm the jealous kind. <laughs> it's a great that song. Great. It's a great song. It's a great. Is that on one of Maria's yeah. records? Pardon me. Is that on one of Maria's records? Then? Uh, no, she sang background on it, uh -huh. and this particular guy who wrote the song sang it. Now this was a country song. Now, yeah. ten years later, 
I'm watching the um, the Tonight Show, and Ray Charles was on there and sang it as a blues. I'm thinking, I'm, yeah, I heard, you know, that's the way we kind of do it. That it was unbelievable, and you know, country music and blues is hey, it's, it's like brothers and sisters. Uh huh. <laughs> we used to do that with Edda. Right, right. Edda, Matter of fact, Edda James did that. Did a version, version of that. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Is that on a record? Yes, that's, that's a record. That's on. Uh, I know I'm that blanking. one I heard is on is Jealous Kind is on record. Uh, I'll have to get a copy yeah, to you. Yeah, let me know if I reach out. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll find that out on for you. Matter of fact, I even think one of our reconstructions we used to do it. Jealous Kind, yeah. Seven Year Itch with the Barry Beckett. That's the one Barry Beckett uh, oh, produced. Nice. She came back after seven years. First yeah, record. that is on that. Was on yeah, yeah, Jealous Kind. That, that, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll, go, I'll just buy it. In the one, I can't think of the composed composer's names, wonderful composer. Something James, James, something James. Lived lived in Woodstock, everybody laughed at him, but he had these incredible lyrics. <laughs> I don't know who that would be. Amos Garrett was part of that scene, right? The Amos Garrett, band. yeah, Amos Garrett was on that session. Yes, he was. Yes, he, he was. played in Maria's band for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, but I remember seeing that. Uh, Bernard Purdy was on that session. And, wow. Uh, Man. Uh, cool um, session. <clears throat> Chuck Rainey was on that session, and the, at the time they were playing with Aretha, and uh, it was quite a quite a session, you know. Yeah. Wow. Well, you guys just keep talking because <laughs> I got more than enough. Well, I'm, you know, I, I plan to you know <laughs> uh, to play uh, at the Warfield with these guys. It's like uh, Oh Home Week, you know, and uh, playing um, with Vince is quite a you know. He's one of my favorite keyboard players, and uh, thank you, Earl. And um, I both, you know, the, his his personnel of the band are like my kids, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I just can't wait to, you know, the, we, we, you know the, the old days in the '60s. You know how the bands came up: um, Jefferson Starship, The Grateful Dead, Moby Grape. These bands, then, if you can remember correctly, they, if you do remember, <laughs> they used to play together. You know. With one, they'd show up and play together, you know. And this is one of the things Vince and I talked about, you know. There's none of that warmness, and you know, we've with Bobby and I, we've played in so many bands together, you know. Vince and I haven't played, but I've watched Vince for the past uh, 10 15 years, you know, playing the other bands. So, we've thought it's time is there's usually no keyboard players that unite and play together, like organ player and a key, another keyboard player. So, we're gonna try something different. So, and, there'll be some collaboration, be some, uh, you know, some, some, we. The very first time I met uh, you and Jerry was at the Lion's Share, and when it was uh, wow. Jerry Garcia and Merle Saunders gig, yeah. and the tubes were co-built. Yes, oh, yes, there yes, the Lion's yes, Share. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We yes. were taking turns who would, it, was, it wasn't a matter of who was going to headline, it was who was going to get to go home first. first. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You yeah, guys yeah. were so gracious enough to, uh, to yeah, switch well, off. We had, had like a great a time. Run. We had <laughs> such a great, the line, line, you should mention that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, I was selling Steve. Uh, it was a wonderful recording. I just got a CD from the Lion Share. You kid. Recorded in Italy. Where <laughs> 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 all the good. Steve's like, get it to me, get it to me. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. But it's a yeah. wonderful recording. It's a wonderful recording, and it's done in Italy, and it has the Lion Share, and it has some unnamed named saxophone player, because we know it was Martin yeah. Fierro, but it had it on the <laughs> unnamed like saxophone player. Of, it's a bootleg, a very good gigs. bootleg. Yes, wow. I have wow. I have to bring your attention to yeah. that. It's a very good one, very good, excellent. Some fans just Play hand it on it the radio me. so that uh, people won't buy the boot. Yeah, wow, there you go. I wish you that would. I, I will make sure you get it. Absolutely. It's That'd very good. <laughs> well, was this when the tubes, I mean, you guys used to like bring a hundred <laughs> television sets. And uh, we didn't have TV back then. We, it was before <laughs> it was the day of the gasoline powered television, I think. We, actually, we might have even been called the Beans. <laughs> It was oh, some time yeah. ago. Wow. But Jerry was great and, and Merle was great and it was just like old style. We were all wide eyed and we saw some guy present Jerry with a shopping bag full of pot and he smiled at <laughs> Vince. And it was uh, it was just real pleasurable. Everybody was really pleasant. Mm. And uh, that was my first time I uh, spoke to Jerry, besides, you know, seeing him in the sixties with Pigpin. And Merle and them. It was fun. We played a couple of days. And you know something? Um, I was I was uh, producing a little group called Sweet Meat. 
and they used to open for me. And um, I was like, um, this, my son was going to school with these little serious musicians by the name of Chris Hayes, mm -hmm. Bonnie Hayes, and the brothers playing drums. And they used to, they were seven, I would sneak in. Kevin Hayes, the drummer? Kevin Hayes <laughs> and Merle Jr. was yeah. their little manager. They were all teenagers. And they <laughs> would open up. They would call the band Say Hayes. Hay, yeah, it was the Hayes and the Saunders family. And they were all teenagers, you know. <laughs> and well, I it brought is a Jerry very small here, world, here, here, uh, it's Chris small. Hayes. And, and uh, you know how Jerry said, he said the F, well, I'll say the F word, wow, you know. <laughs> He's going to be some, wow, you know. <laughs> Only the F word would come out, you know. And uh, he was amazed that Chris was, Chris was about 16 to 17, you know. I said, well, this is the group, this is the group. Look at, look at, look at, look at the sister play piano, you know. I was all wrapped up in the Hayes family then. And it was called yeah. Sweet Mate. Wow. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, it goes around just, it's just you know, we all... Uh, you know that that was the days when everybody was just having fun and everybody playing music and just yeah. And we wish that could happen again, you know. Wow, it's happening obviously. Yeah. The, the first time I saw you, was, I played a gig with Bo Diddley. We had we're, it was the Tubes and Bo Diddley at Fremont Drag Store, <laughs> and, I, and I was fifteen. And that was my first like you know like. So How'd you get in a Bo Diddley's band at 15? This guitar player named Jake goes, he saw it's me at Downwards Music City. And he goes, hey, Bobby, you want to do a gig? I said, okay, it's Bo Diddley. I never knew who Bo Diddley was. <laughs> so we go, I go up there and, and we're playing at you know, Fremont Drag Strip. You know, Sunday, 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 wow. one of these big cars. God. And we're in the back and I'm back with the tubes and they have like these girls dressing and doing this. I'm like, wow. Really cool. This well, you really had your cool. own go-go girls too with Bo, didn't you? <laughs> no, you guys had. You guys had. Oh, okay. and I was just happy Some to be in there watching, going, "Wow, look at this!" <laughs> and then they come running in. The guy goes, "Hey, can I use your guitar strap?" And I went, "Okay, here," because I was just really happy to let him. You know, wow, it's really cool. I look out there. And there's this guy in these boots with these these platform shoes on this high, playing the guitar with a liver with my guitar <laughs> strap. <laughs> Oh, that's so quailed in his liver guitar. Oh, man. man. And I went, <laughs> I'm strapped. I almost <laughs> left my liver on the uh, starting line there. Well, uh, it was loud. But during the break, yeah, you were hiding in the tent when they had the funny cars, you know. And this uh, is like between races? <laughs> pretty oh, much, yeah. you know. They'd race a while, and then we'd play a while. And <clears throat> I walked across the starting line after oh. they'd raced for some time. Came out of both of my shoes. There was so much burned rubber on yeah. it. And then uh, during the other break where they did the equipment change, you could uh, race your own car. You just paid like a dollar or something, and they would time your car. Volkswagen. You didn't race against anybody, but you could go as fast as your car would take you down the quarter mile. Just put your earplugs in to start and leave them. They didn't even help. We were in the trailer with it. earplugs, and when the funny cars start cranking out, it was just the air death. Were... Oh, God. Big flames. <laughs> Tires. Wow. So that was our great. first uh, co-bill, huh? Man, yeah, I, I said, man, this is it. And then after the gig, Bo Dilly goes, you did good, boy. And hand me $75 bills. Hand me this big wad of dollar bills. <laughs> oh, man. That's pretty Just good, Just thought of his name, Bobby Charles. Bobby oh, Charles. Bobby Charles is that composer of that song. Bobby Charles. Yeah. From Woodstock. And it's, yeah. I don't know if he, he's written some other things, but... Uh, well, he was on that, uh, he was in The Last Waltz. He, yes, he, yes, he had some connection with the band. Yeah, he, yeah. He did yes, yes, he with the band. Yes, did. he did some writing with the, for the band too. Yes, yeah. Bobby Charles. I That's, think they played with him early on. Yes, the early, Hawks, early, you know, yeah. During the Ronnie Hawkins days, he did some writing for the band. That's Down right. south in New Orleans was his. Uh, yes, the yes, one that they did yes. together. There. Well, Jealous Kind was this. Ah, oh, cool. Look for Bobby Charles records. What the? I'm just burrowing. Yeah, they're trying to get him this way, that way. Someone's trying to get him. Well, this is great, you guys. Just keep talking about weird gigs. Ken's going to have a whole TV show. <laughs> Everybody wants to know all the musicians want to come in, you know. <laughs> Santana, is that true? You can call us. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, and then these, there's a, a, the Maritime Halls had all these bands sort of getting back together. The uh, It's a Beautiful Day had a reunion or some sort of. Mm -hmm collaboration of those people this month and just isn't had, there a Moby Grape reunion up in the well works? we just had a collaboration this last weekend at the uh, Catalyst of uh, the Dinosaurs Barry Melton and um, wasn't Spencer wasn't playing drums but Greg Elmore Greg Elmore played drums yeah, he's Greg a dinosaur Elmore. yeah he's a dinosaur and um, Peter P Peter, Peter on, on bass, bass. Uh, the guitar player I wasn't familiar with but he, I, I used 
You can beep this out. I, I, oh, Bob Fleury. Yes, yes, yes. Very yeah, good. Yeah, I saw the announcement about that. Very good guitar player. That's that. my first actually time playing. Wasn't he in like the Hoodie Rhythm Devils or something? That's like right. That? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I, I I didn't know I was going to have a good time. I had a great time. I had a great time. I had Dinosaur a very fun it's time. It's been a long time since that name. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, we hadn't played together with four or five years, and just. Everybody look. We got on stage. Everybody just looked. Away. <laughs> so, yeah. so I said, "Well, start with the blues, okay?" <laughs> and we just no rehearsals. A, no rehearsal. No, no, you know, no, uh, we didn't even uh, go do a sound check. I used to earn twenty bucks a shot of uh, writing lead sheets for the Hoodoo Rhythm Devils back when you had to present a legible re- lead sheet. And wow. Rubinson used to uh, give me twenty bucks a pop when they were, the Hoodoos were first coming out. That was a fine band. Sure was. was yeah, really. Joe. Band. And, uh, remember uh, uh, Rewind's Pink Cadillac? It became the Ant Farms uh, drive the Cadillac rocket ship the through a they stack of burning uh, television sets. I remember that. <laughs> he donated his car for that. It was great. Wow. Wow. I remember that uh, <laughs> that media burn that was called. Mm-hmm. It was a great little documentary about that driving the Cadillac through the flaming TVs. 